Conversations That Matter is a partner program of the Center for Dialogue at Simon Fraser University. The production of this program is made possible thanks to the support of the following and viewers like you. Mike, very interesting topic today, Expo 86. 30 years since Expo 86, the world's attention on Vancouver. So today's episode, we're talking to Jimmy Pattison, and you're going to have a conversation about why did we have the World's Fair here? How did it go? How did it work? And what's the legacy? Now, before we get to that conversation, though, you've prepared a special report for us, so let's go to that now. something in the air the world is spinning a heart beat faster the future's ours to share something was happening expo 86 was vancouver's grand entrance onto the world stage cast your mind back to may of 1986 the Prince and Duchess of Wales were in Vancouver to officially open the 1986 World's Fair. Vancouver, British Columbia welcomes Prince Charles, Diana, the Princess of Wales, Mila Mulroney, and Prime Minister Brian Mulroney to Expo 86. So, ladies and gentlemen, together with my wife, we have the greatest pleasure in declaring Expo 86 officially open. Excitement was in the air. This was going to be Vancouver's coming out party, its introduction to the world. Set the world in motion. Together we can catch a rising star. We can touch tomorrow. Discover in the wonder. With fingers crossed, the goal was to attract 14 million visitors. Over the next six months, the turnstiles clicked over at a rate that superseded all expectations. The fair closed, more than 22 million people, near and far, had experienced something special. The hyper-modern, the ancient, the sacred, and the silly were all on display, often in the same pavilion. Expo 86 was more than just a triumph at the ticket office. It reinvented the World's Fair experience. It transformed a communications and transportation exhibit into a celebration of the future. You'll find man and machines pushing transportation and satellite communication to the outer limits. And what prescient themes, the unimaginable changes in transportation and communications have transformed our world and mirrored the remarkable changes in Vancouver. 107 countries and kingdoms, provinces and corporations are here. The Vancouver Sun claimed Expo 86 as the single biggest catalyst of change in Vancouver's history. Twenty-two million people, Mike. That's a pretty big number. Why is it significant? Well, it was significant in many ways because Vancouver really punched above its weight. And if, it really did. If, if yeah, if you look yeah. back at, I remember this, mm -hmm. but you know, kids that were born in the last 15, 20 years I have no memory of this. But at the time, it was important. You know, we compare Vancouver, which was considered a B-level World's Fair before it happened. And compared to that, that to Seattle, mm -hmm. uh, many people look back to Seattle in 1964. That was really meant to be top-notch, A-class. We ended up having more people come to Vancouver than, than went to Seattle. And by it, more than double. By more than double. Yeah. 22 million people showed up in Vancouver. And, you know, you'll, you'll hear many people often say, well, this is what put Vancouver on the map. It really did, didn't it? Yeah, yeah. And, and it put it on the map in a couple of ways, certainly as a tourism destination, even for people in Canada and, and America that hadn't been here before. Holy smokes, that's not that far away. That's a beautiful looking place. And then of course, putting it on a map from an investment and economic perspective, 
uh, per particularly as it relates to Asia, because remember 1986 is just 10 years before Hong Kong reverted back to mainland China control, and we all know that the investment opportunities that opened up because of that in, in, in Vancouver, you know, people that are in the know, people like Jimmy Pattison, point back to 1986 and say, that is really what put us in front of the eyes of people that had money to invest, whether it was in businesses or, or, or real estate. You remember Hong Kong was a, an issue with Margaret Thatcher, mm -hmm. and of course that was the first wave we started to see. And then there was the Taiwan after that, and then of course the mainland Chinese started to come after that. It was the beginning of us becoming an Asian city. That's true. That's true. We really are known. The Asia Pacific Foundation calls us, you know, the, the largest Asian city outside of out of Asia, and and you know we have a whole. Uh, focus in British Columbia between the federal government and the provincial government to get more businesses to headquarters themselves here in in Vancouver interestingly all of the success stories that they've had to date Chinese businesses that's right that want to uh, make Vancouver their their gateway to North America that's right and that's right. we're uniquely positioned to do that that's right there are some people who would say uh, okay, it's happening so fast and the consequences are quite significant. That's right. We're, we're reaping the benefits still three decades later. It's the Pacific Century, uh, and, and this was a, 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 Expo 86 for Vancouver was the opening of a door to make us relevant. Yeah, it set the stage. Context. But what's interesting is, you know, when you talk to Jimmy Patterson, uh, there was a point during the process in the lead-up to Expo 86 where he almost said, well, don't do it. Well, that's right, and, and it's the, the albatross that, that, that many in the economics world always point to in Vancouver and BC, and that is labor strife. You know, there was a five, six-month labor disruption right in the middle of the heart of, of, of putting this whole thing together. And, and, and Jimmy Pattison, being the shrewd business guy, said to the premier at the time, maybe we ought to just pull the plug on this thing because it, it doesn't look like it's going to come off. And, um, yeah, and to Bill Bennett's credit, he said, no, we're going ahead, despite the fact that the mayor, Mike Harcourt, even actively campaigned internationally <laughs> against the fair. It, it, you know, <laughs> I'm not from here. I, in fact, I'm mm -hmm. from the U.S., as you know, and I was about 13 years old when the Expo 86 was and I, and I have some memories of it on television because, again, it was still mm -hmm. something that you'd see in the, in the evening news, the World's Fair. And it's a distant memory, but look around our skyline. Today. Our skyline today is a tribute to Expo 86, mm -hmm. and, and not just uh, Canada Place and, and, and the Sky Train. These are all things that directly came out of it, but the fact that we have these beautiful, magnificent towers uh, of residences and, and businesses in, in Vancouver, it, it in many ways accelerated because of Expo 86. Yeah, and because of all of that, we wanted to hear from Jimmy Patterson, the man who was at the center of it. He was the chairman of the World's Fair. And so I went off and had a conversation with him. Let's go to that now. Economically, when we cast our minds back to the, to the mid-1980s, it was quite different here, wasn't it? What was it like back then? Well, in the 80s, uh, Premier Bennett, uh, starting in 81, uh, people may not remember those, uh, particularly new people, that would not know about it, but our unemployment rate was high. <clears throat> Business was poor in British Columbia. And uh, Premier Bennett decided uh, with his cabinet that they wanted to do some stimulation uh, of the economy, and they came up with this uh, Expo 86 idea. And, uh, and Grace McCarthy was the big driver in that. <clears throat> and uh, but Bill Bennett made the decision to take the risk. And so that, then we had the fair. It was a risk back then, though, wasn't very it? Very much. It very much was a risk, and Bill Bennett took it. It was a big ticket item for the time, and uh, it had a lot of uncertainty to it, but it turned out okay. I gotta get you to hang on for just one second while we take a quick commercial break. We'll be right back. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. Thank you. You came in partway through the process when it was not going well. 
Um, what was your early assessment of how to, you know, how to turn it around and, and make it work? We got off to uh, a sort of a slow start, and uh, then we had to make a couple of changes. But the, the bottom line was that we had a lot of, Premier Bennett had a lot of hard calls to make, including a big labor issue. We had a big, huge labor issue at the time. And uh, it was a lot of naysayers. You, you know, you talked about the labor strife and the situation that, that we were in back then. And it was getting to be kind of grim in, in, in the sort of the middle years running up to. Right. Uh, and, and the Premier had to make a tough decision as to whether or not he was going to go or not go. How much credit does he deserve for, for doing that? One hundred percent credit. He took, uh, he took the risk. Uh, we, I recommended at one time to him to not proceed with the fair until we got the labor situation sorted out because at that time they didn't want to give us a no strike and I didn't want to spend all this money uh, and then find out that all of a sudden we had a strike on our hands over something. And, uh, but anyway, Bill Bennett and his cabinet worked out a deal uh, to make the, the labor thing work both so we could have people work on the site that were union and non-union. And, uh, and, and, and that, that, that got it done. So as you're moving along getting and starting to attract different uh, exhibitors and countries, where was China at the time? Because when we think about China as being this juggernaut uh, in 2016, uh, they were not a major player back in the, in the early 1980s. No, they weren't. As a matter of fact, China uh, did not, we had to subsidize the China Pavilion to get them to come. You had to underwrite? We had to subsidize them to get them to come. It was very difficult to get them to come because they didn't have the finances to come. Yeah. And, uh, and they did come, and uh, it was very important for us to have them. Why was it important to you that China be there, especially well, even then? Yeah. We had to have China. We had to have Russia and we needed Cuba. Because you remember the curtain was up, the Iron Curtain, mm -hmm. and everybody was interested in communism. And here we are putting on a World's Fair. We had to get the communists there. And who were the communists? They were Cuba, they were Russia, and they were China. And of course, we had to get the Americans there, actually, which was one of the hardest things we did was get the Americans there, actually. It was harder to get the Americans there. It was harder to get the Americans to come to our fair than it was the Chinese and the Russians. How come? And Cuba. <laughs> well, it, had, it required an act in the Congress to get it passed. It, they, for, foreign, for foreign fairs at that time, uh, uh, the Americans couldn't just decide to go to have a World's Fair someplace. It had to be passed by Congress uh, and uh, and it took a lot of regulations that it had to get done and it got done but it was slow going. Mm -hmm. So May 2nd 1986 comes you open up the doors and your hope <laughs> the weather doesn't look so great on day no, one. That's right. <laughs> and you got your fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, it must have been a little uh, a bit of a, a nail-biting tense time. Well it was a May the 2nd 1986 was a huge day for us We'd put five years' work in to it, and uh, a lot of people, and uh, now we had to deliver, execute. In the first week or so, was the numbers were low, the weather was bad, uh, and then something happened. Well, we took, uh, we got through the first, uh, we had rainy period, and then th things started to get better. I gotta get you to hang on once again while we take another commercial break. We'll be back in a moment. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. Thank you. They didn't just get better. They 
took off? Well, we budgeted, we budgeted for 14 million people, Stuart, and we wound up with 22 million. That's an extraordinary success. So it turned out better than we expected. What do you think happened uh, that all of a sudden saw such an increase in uh, numbers at the turnstile? Uh, I think the, the people of British Columbia took ownership of the fair. Uh, we had, if you recall, we had thousands of volunteers uh, and they, they were involved in the fair. We got a lot of people from the interior coming down. Uh, we visited a lot of small towns prior to the fair and they all got interested in the fair. So the province, the people from the province took ownership of it and, uh, and if the weather picked up uh, and it was fun and there was a lot of fun when you came to the fair. We had a lot of fun things that uh, were apart from the educational side of it. When you take a look at the fair, what do you think that it did for our confidence as a city and as a province? Well, I think it gave us, certainly gave us confidence that we could do something of this nature. Uh, and secondly, the people, I think it boosted the spirits of the people. When you do something like this, like an Olympics that we had in 2010, I, I'm a big believer in these kind of things. I think they're good for the morale of the people. I think that a lot of things that we would never get done, uh, get done like the Coquihalla Highway uh, in the case of Expo 86 and, and uh, the big uh, the auditorium and the things of that nature that happened with the Olympics. So there's a lot of things that get done uh, that don't get done uh, unless you focus on these projects. Some of the lasting structural legacies are SkyTrain. Uh, right. Did you uh, envision that it could be what it is today uh, when, it, when it first was introduced into the fair? No, but that was another Bill Bennett uh, deal that he took the risk on that and it was a huge contributor, has been a huge contributor to the, to the whole lower mainland here. That was a major, major commitment. And uh, uh, again, they, they made, uh, they being Bill Bennett and his key people made the decision to take that risk. Well, that was all part of the Expo deal. If we hadn't done Expo 86, do you think that we would have been able to stage the Olympics? It gave the, uh, the, the Olympic people that went after the, uh, the opportunity, at least they had under their belt, uh, we'd put on a successful fair. It certainly didn't hurt them. Yep. Uh, but um, to, to do it on their own, I'm sure they could have done it. So when we take a look at the role that Expo 86 did in putting us on the world stage, yes, we were you know, here in the Pacific Northwest of, of North America, but Expo 86 really did raise our awareness, didn't it? It did. So as you started to move out around the world, uh, did you find that there was a change in the way that people responded to you being from Vancouver? It was a huge difference for me because prior to 1986, when I traveled around in my work, I had to explain most of the time where Vancouver was, including when I was going to New York, if you can believe it, in places like that, I'd explain where Vancouver was. After Expo 86, I didn't nearly have to explain where it was so much, and that's where I noticed the difference. Before, I'd always say I'm from Vancouver, British Columbia, then I'd say, well, it's just north of Seattle, north of San Francisco, and explain it. But after the fair, I never seemed to have to do that anymore. We had Expo 86, we had the Olympics. The Olympics also uh, thrust us even more into the international spotlight. Very much so. Well, I think they both had a huge influence on the awareness of where to come. I mean, Vancouver is a special place in the world. Yes. And it's one of the nicest places you'll ever find in the world. And I think that this brought the attention to certainly the people in Asia uh, a lot about Vancouver, and particularly the Chinese. Last break, we'll be back in just a moment. Conversations That Matter is a not-for-profit program made possible thanks to the charitable support of the following and from viewers like you. Please visit conversationsthatmatter.tv and help us to continue to produce this program. Thank you. But we can't rest on our laurels, can we? Uh, <laughs> you never can do that, Stuart. Yeah. 
So should we be looking at another uh, significant global event like Expo 86 or the Olympics to keep us in this unique position? Well, I'm all for it, but you know, we got a, a huge issue of cost of real estate around here. And, it's enormously uh, high. And you, but you've got young people coming up and these people got to have homes and they got to be affordable. They got to be able to get jobs that can pay for them. And uh, when you have a lot of offshore money coming in, it drives the price of real estate up. And that makes it more difficult for our younger people to get homes that they need to raise their families. Well, and I'm sure there are some people who will go, well, that's maybe because we were too successful with Expo and, and the Olympics in, in attracting so much attention. Well, we certainly, there's no question, we've attracted attention and that's, the result is what we see, what we have today. And it's been good for the economy, it's been for good for British Columbia, and it's certainly been good for taxes and raised our image and all of that. But uh, like everything else, it's uh, when you have this kind of interest, prices go up in real estate and that's the negative in some respects. You know, we live in a, in a high-tech world. Once again, if we go back to the themes of Expo 86, they were incredibly prescient. Transportation and communication. And when you look at the, the range of changes over the last 30 years in both of those sectors, right. and both of them uh, play an important role in the future of, of Vancouver and British Columbia. So maybe we need to be more focused on, on, on high-tech. Well, <coughs> we have that that TED have their meeting here, I mm -hmm. think, every year now. Yes, they do. And, and that's an important group uh, to come, and uh, it's very high profile, and uh, so maybe we need more, more of that type of thing. We, certainly the high-tech industry is growing in our part of the world. But it's important that we continue to uh, reach out. Absolutely. And, uh, and, and invite the world to come to Vancouver. Absolutely, and they're coming. And they'll continue to come out. Absolutely. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.